Welcome everyone to the episode 9 of the Language Journal. Here at Day Translations, we love languages and people and how they can grow, interact and evolve while using different languages. As always, our interviewer and host of this series, CEO and founder of Day Translations Inc, Sean Patrick Hopwood, will be interviewing a guest connected to languages and to the linguist world. On this episode, we will be speaking with Mr. Javier Diaz Fernandez Carvajal. He is the head of community at Bureau Works, a company that enables comprehensive oversight of translation and localization operations. Thank you for being with us, Javier. Well, thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure. And passing to the mic to Sean, and yeah. let's hear your special chat. Thank you. I'm, I'm very excited to talk to you. Is Javier Diaz Fernandez Carvajal. I love yeah, it. It's a beautiful long name. <laughs> yes, yes, as you probably know that in Spain we have the name of our father first and then this the name of my mother, of the mother, right? Father and first, mother. Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure which one was first, but I knew about it. Yeah, that goes first and then my second. And then we have uh, also composed names by, by those two second names, and they can belong. I remember one, I had a colleague in university who was called Ernesto de Viana Cárdenas y de García Bernardo. Four in wow. two. So that was like, oh, that's amazing. I love it. I love it. It's, it sounds so erudite, erudito. Bringing localization industry, bringing the people together for these long names. That's what it should be like, right? <laughs> yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so beautiful. I mean, since you're involved in translation, you're probably like me. Like, I don't know, you, like, you're living in the Czech Republic now, right? I am not yeah. for long. I've been here for, for uh, nine years. I entered the industry back in 2015 in my early 30s a latecomer to the industry and I came in, I joined a very small software company, which is now one of the big players in the, in the technology field in our industry. I've worked, uh, actually from them, I worked at Bureau Works where I work right now between 2018 and 2020 for two years. Then I went to the um, uh, uh, services side and I just returned back to the family of Bureau Works. I miss them so much. Okay. So I came back. So do you speak do you speak Czech now? No, not really. Not really. No. <laughs> Unfortunately, I never got the chance to learn. A lot uh, of people there speak English? Yeah, mostly like here uh, in Prague, we have a <clears throat> we live in a in a big international community. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Czech, we know we have Czech friends, but they <clears throat> excuse me, when they come close to us, they know that we don't speak that well and they <laughs> yeah. I mean I'm pretty sure in the Czech Republic they have a different way of naming. You know, and yeah. I, I don't even know because I've seen the only thing I know is from when I watch the football players, you know, I kind of try to figure out how their names. I try to make sense of their names, but uh, yeah. I'm not sure. Who is that one that played for Juventus? He was amazing. Pavel Nedved. Oh, Nedved. Yeah. Nedved. Yeah. Oh, he was yeah. amazing. Ballon d'Or 2001. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. I can't even speak one word of Czech, but I, I can yeah. It's, it's difficult. Probably, it's, it's difficult. It's a difficult language. It's a very difficult yeah. language. I see you. You have a, an extensive background in international sales. Um, I, um, it, what? What is before the language industry? What was your main focus before you got involved in the language industry? Well, so I just to put you in in in, in situation. Like I am, born, I just turned forty one years old, and I'm one of those classical millennials that just went out on the on the on the market job the year that the world, whole world fell apart, right? I have uh, 2008, yeah. Okay. That was my first job, professional job on the corporate side ever, right? Yeah. And then um, and then uh, I, I'm a lawyer. I have, I studied law. Okay. Finished law, the whole thing. I hated it. I hated <laughs> it, my guts. Yeah. And uh, but I always had a thing for traveling, for going abroad, for meeting people, for connecting, making friends. So my yeah. father, who was an ex, who is, he's retired, but he's an expert in the, in the, he's always been involved even, you know, in, in international projects, etc. cetera. I live in the States for quite some time. Back when it wasn't so useful, useful as it is now, he told me that you should go for the international business side and stuff. So I finished my law studies and I did my MBA in uh, my master's in international business. Where? Uh, in, I did it uh, in Spain. And then I had my practicum in Miami. Well, okay. Of course, you live there. And yeah, I'm in Tampa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, so, what, what university in Spain? Oviedo, University of oh, Oviedo. Oh, in like, Oviedo, okay. My, my hometown, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's okay. where I studied, that's where I studied. So yeah, and from there, 
I, as I said, I, I jumped in the job industry in the worst possible moment in the last, in this century. So I was like dragging around, yeah. getting a job here, moved to Germany, like most of us in my generation in Spain, or many of us in my generation in Spain, getting some jobs, surviving here, or there. Yeah. And then I, years ago, I was, I stumbled upon a, a job advertisement uh, when I was living in Munich. Yes. And I sent my CV, it was a technology company. I didn't understand what they were doing by far. Yes. So I sent them my CV. This company turned to be a company called Memsource, which was a very small localization software provider. I know them who, well. Yeah. Yeah. Who I was like 15, 16, 17 hires. We were very little team, small team here in Prague. We would work very closely together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I did an interview, and I remember, I will not forget that I came inside the interview and I told the former CEO who has already exited the industry, told him, like, he, he told me, like, do you want to really get a good job in sales with us in an industry you don't know? And I told him, David, I can sell software, nuclear bombs, or sausages. I can sell anything. And that <laughs> yeah. was the end of the, I will not forget this. It was so funny. made him laugh, and he hired me. The nuclear next bomb for sausages. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I will not forget that one. I will not forget that one. It's a funny start I had in this industry. Yeah, oh, that's, that's great. Yeah, that, yeah. Sales is is very interesting. I saw um I saw that you have a um, Bayern Munich jersey. Uh, Say that again. I saw uh, you have a Bayern Munich Bayern Munich jersey oh, football jersey. I have a collection of I think it's some eighty. Eighty. Yeah, I wow. collect them like the, I, the industry. I had about thirty football 30. jerseys. And I was kind of cleaning up my closet, and I only kept like about twenty of them. Oh <laughs> no! no I, I, way. I have yeah. a the oldest one I have is a '96, '97 Arsenal T-shirt. Oh, so really? that's the first one. I, I mean, it's not it's my second ever, but it's the first one I I, I keep the habit here, like store. Yeah, I have a friend from Uruguay, and uh, he has probably thousands. Yeah, saying, yeah. And so he decided like he can't keep them anymore, so he opened a store. And he sells oh. them as vintage, yeah. Oh. Here, here in Tampa, and then everyone just came there. He has like old, um, old Boca Juniors jerseys. He has like everything. Galatasaray, old Galatasaray. Oh, I've been at the Galatasaray Stadium. Really? Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Wow. I travel a lot, and I I travel to see football all the time. Oh, like wow. uh, what was the last game I saw? What was it? I don't remember because I mean I go here <laughs> often. But I think I've, I've seen all, all the major leagues. I've been everywhere. I've traveled to Champions League. I've done uh, I've done Boca River. I've done a lot of, of stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, the last one I saw was, was Atletico de Madrid. You've been to Boca River? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's really nice. The last yeah. One, yeah. So, um, and you're a, what is your main team that you're a fan of? Barca. Barcelona. I'm a big Barca fan. Yeah. Okay, like that's nice. For, for, I've been a Barca fan for since I was born. And Everything I don't know, that's not true. Since uh since the early 90s, since the very you know, the, the start of what is called the dream team, the Cruyff era, all that stuff. Yeah. And I am a person that I didn't really like football until I was uh, 10. And yeah. uh I started like now I live, breathe, and sweat football. I'm watching football all the time. I am reading football news all the time. I am, I, I, I mean, I just you play love. a lot too. No, I cannot. I'm the worst football player on this planet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, uh, for real. Like, the worst. But I know that I know, I know, I, I try to 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 learn also. I mean, I, I like uh, tactics and stuff. And look, here's a picture of me in Boca, in River oh. Plate. I mean, oh, sorry, great. it's a bit blurry, but that's it. Okay. Yeah. I, I, so, I hear uh, originally Barcelona took their colors from something in Switzerland, right? Or I guess, I, like, I don't know that story for sure. What they, what the 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 founder is a Swiss, is okay. a Swiss, Swiss Swiss person called John yeah. Gamper. Yeah. Ooh. What's his name? John Gamper. Okay, John Gamper. Yeah. Okay. John Gamper. John Gamper and John Gamper. Yeah. Right? That's Catalanized, if I'm not mistaken. But I think. I don't really know where they got the colors from. That's something that I need to investigate into. But I think they a... got the colors from an, a, a Swiss team, a small. Basile. Team yeah, Basel. Basel. Sorry, Basel. Uh, ¿Cómo se llama? Uh, Basel. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So that that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. They have a lot of Swiss roots there. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, 
speaking of Barcelona, they um, uh, oh no, they were talking about um, Jose Mourinho in uh, Madrid. Careful with the names. Careful, eh? Be careful. <laughs> Madrid is not allowed to name in this house. They call him the interpreter. You know. Yeah, you used to call him the interpreter. That's my first autograph I ever got from a football player was in Oviedo back in 96 when Robson and, both, and he was the interpreter of Robson. He went to play against Real Oviedo. In Mourinho was interpreter? Mourinho was interpreter. Mourinho for was Robson. Like, for Robson, yeah. Wow. He was not the, like, like, I don't know if it's, he was like a sort of like a assistant coach, something like this. Yeah. Like he was, speak he learned from him and i remember like i have his autograph on my barca scar in oviedo unfortunately oh. i must say <laughs> you don't like him yeah. now i will regret it <laughs> I will allow you. Well, you can you can send it to me i'll take it <laughs> yeah uh, i that star is in spain still not here. but here i have a, i have a lot of stars as well yeah 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 i was in madrid one time uh i'm apologize but i, I kind of like madrid <laughs> But I have um, when they won the Champions League, I think in 2002 or something, um, yeah. I, I, I got a scarf, a purple and white scarf. And then um, these um, these these people, they followed me around and they asked me if they could hold the scarf. And I said, you can hold it. And I knew they were going to try to keep it. So I followed them for like two hours. And, and the, the whole night I was like, can I have my scarf back? Can I have my scarf back? And it yeah. took like all my negotiation skills to get the scarf back. And I still have it. I got yeah, I got, I got, I, I'm one of those people that would have probably taken. I took one like that from <laughs> a friend of mine in, in, the, in, the, in the Allianz Arena in Munich I, from Bayern. I, got yeah. it here. I took it. He said, like, yeah, let me borrow it for the game. He never saw it again. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah. what, what are you you're doing now with bureau works? It's um, you do a focus on localization and uh, yeah. And what is, and what is so your role there? Let me put you in context. Like bureau works is a, is a, is 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 a TMS, right? Mm -hmm. We are promoting it as a new tool uh, to those who have also. Uh, well, it's, it's not new, but it's 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 a it's a TMS mm -hmm. as well. And it's been revamped. We have uh, implemented the uh, AI recently as well to the to the mix. Uh, we have created a the BWX generative language engine. Uh, you know, it, it, this engine combines the translation memories, machine translation, glossaries, uh, interpersonalized and contexted aware feed. You know that mm -hmm. helps boost in productivity, right? So that's yeah. that's this. It's it's been uh, it's been built uh, years ago for 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 the clients, and it got to a point of maturity where we think that many people can use it, and we're 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 selling it, we're marketing it now to the to the industry and to well, anyone that has a a need for a TMS. Oh, yeah, that's wonderful. Least, buyers yeah translators as well we have a very big pool of translators that use our system as well so yeah yeah I've, 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 we've, I've, as the president of uh, day translations i'm always looking at different tms translation management systems in order to kind of um you know to improve our the quality of what we do and those things uh, bureau works and other companies really help make us more effective yeah and a lot of people don't you know really understand the translation industry sometimes we get these larger clients and they want machine translation or they want translation memory and they have large projects, you know, they, they mm -hmm. have to work with a company that's going to get it done quickly. And, you know, they, you know, if you have Cisco or Microsoft and they have like a million or two, two million words need to be done, you're going to have to use a combination of human translation, machine translation, stuff like that sometimes in order to make sure it gets done on time with good quality and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 There's, there's a yeah. quote from a good friend of mine who says like, localization is only noticed when things go wrong right? yeah. So yeah i guess, sure. I guess it's uh, i mean it's, it's 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 our daily bread for those who are watching and don't know our industry uh, dealing with management with upper management with colleagues to try to explain hey this is important for you you need to have it properly done you don't think it's important but wait when you get to an international expansion point or 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 right so yeah yeah. those those stages so it's yeah yeah it's it's so much i mean if you just consider all the countries that need the localization you know even even countries you know like senegal or 
or Burma, everywhere. It's just, it's just I mean, we probably grow up thinking so globally, and we don't understand how some people don't. You know, they just stay in their yeah. little their little world, and you know, just go. You know, speak the same language every day. You know, yeah. we work with different languages. You know, there's thousands of languages in the world. You know, it's 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 very interesting and it's very exciting to be part of this because there's so much that we can do. Definitely. For your job, I was going to ask, do you do you travel a lot or do you I still? Do. Yeah. Do I travel like 50% of my time. Actually, like, well, I mean, honestly, I combine it between uh, personal and in 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 work. Yeah. Right? I've never. I mean, I've always been a, a, a. I mean, I've always been. I I I entered this industry in 2015, but I've been working remote for the last two, let's say three, because it's like my first period at BureauWorks, then the LSP I work for, and then BureauWorks again. Uh, I've been working remotely since 2018, so six years already. Yeah. So for me, the pandemic wasn't a, a big change in the way I would do things. Right. I also really miss, miss office life a bit sometimes. Right. Yeah. Quick coffees, yeah. those water talks. Yeah. Catching yeah. Up. <laughs> Talking about football on Monday, which yeah, I haven't done much here in Czech Republic because it's not a, it's not the number one sport here, unfortunately. Oh really? But, What's the number one sport in the Czech Republic? Okay. 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 Yeah. okay. Yeah. So yeah, I travel a lot. I travel a lot. I'm traveling actually. Yeah, every couple of I return on on, on Thursday, Sunday. Today is it's a Wednesday for those who are watching, uh, wow. and and uh, and uh, I returned a couple of days ago from a long trip that I was on holidays, holidays and working from Spain, yeah. and then before uh, I spend a lot of time in the United States, traveling around mainly California, but I also visit a lot. New York, I go a lot to Seattle, sometimes to LA, you know, places oh where gosh. these are long flights for you. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I'm oh leaving gosh, in can... now again. I've only been to Europe once and it was a no. long yeah. Really? Yeah, oh, wow. it was it was rough for me. It was like nine hours. <laughs> well, I have 12, 12 plus a one and a one hour flight from here to my the place where you take it because there are no direct flights right now to the to the West Coast. So it's a uh, <laughs> yeah. So in um, so in Oviedo, do they speak another language or is it just is Spanish? It's Spanish mainly. We have a like a, in Spain the official languages are Spanish, Galician, Basque, Catalan, and uh, let me think if there's another one. and uh, what else? Val uh, Valenciano? Maybe yes. I don't know. And then there's <laughs> there's 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 a. Uh, there's uh, dialects as well, right? Yeah. And uh, my region has a dialect. You have to think um, the evolution of Spanish. Like, uh, and I'm 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 a lawyer, but my my passion is history, right? And yeah. I always love history and all that stuff. And uh, you go back to the origins of of modern Spain, right? And you probably, if you're aware of our history, uh, Spain was invaded by the Moors yes. in the eighth century. Which had a present for eight hundred years in our in our in our in what Spain is today now, right? Eight hundred. That's a long time. That's a long. The United time. States is much younger than that. So uh, yeah, you have imagine to how much influence for sure. Yeah, where I, where I come from, there's a there's a there's a place. There's there's two palaces called Los Monumentos, the monuments, right? Which are mm -hmm. palaces built in the eight hundreds, right? Okay. So and they're still like trying to see if I can show a picture. Like, look, this is. Was this is a bit of one of them. Okay. Eight hundred, like sorry, a thousand, eight hundred, okay. yeah, yeah, a thousand yeah. three hundred year old buildings. So what I wanted to explain is like, like the, the the gods, the busy gods back then, they got pushed north and the Christians, right? Yeah. So behind the mountains where I'm from, Asturias and Asturias, uh, the the languages on that part there evolved to to the. To, to Castilian, Galician, Basque, and and and, and the others, right? Yeah. So that's 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 it. we we do not have an official language. I never learned, but we have a dialect. It's called, it's called Asturiano, and, and okay. I I don't speak it. We don't speak it. Yes, yeah, yeah, my go. city was actually founded by some Asturianos. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's we have cool. a place called Centro Asturiano, and it's yeah, not too far from okay. where I live. There's a lot. There's many Centro Asturianos there in around the world. There's in Mexico, in Buenos Aires, in, in yeah. many places. There's, yeah, yeah. We were also very, uh, like, I'm an immigrant. I've been immigrating for 15 years. Yeah. 
Asturians and Galicians are known for being immigrants around the <laughs> yeah. A lot of presence in, in Puerto Rico, in Mexico, in all those places, right? Yeah. So if we do not like, and, and actually, it's, there's look something that I could, we could fight against, right? It's like, uh, like there's been a lot of, there was talk always as you grow up about oficialidad, officialization of the dialect, which never happened. And it's actually, it was actually at some point stigmatized uh, because the Asturian was spoken in villages, so let's say, right? So whenever somebody heard, <laughs> Someone speaking in a very Asturian way, this is like, yeah. oh my God, it's a villager, right? And that was the, yeah. the stigma that we've always, that I've always experienced, right? You never learn Asturian in, in schools, right? For example, right? Yeah. Very interesting. That, for example. Do, they, do they have a different uh, alphabet or? No, 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 no. It's the same as far as I know. No, 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 no. And, and how far is uh, Asturian from Galicia? Right. It's so. It's it's not that that that's that different, I would say. And um, that comes from somebody that I lived in in Asturias for 25 years. I was going to Galicia for summer all my life. Yeah. And um, we start like when there's a H H in Spanish, it's an F in okay. in, in in Asturian, and and like this evolving to port like Portuguese comes from Galician, right? And it's yeah. So that's I'm, I'm personally in moving to Portugal and I'm reading Portuguese contracts, etc. And I understand way more than other regional languages in in wow. Spain, like, like like Catalan, for example. I personally, because of the you know the same evolution of the language, so let's say, right? As language is something fascinating to me. It so is. I, could, I love to hear about it. So it is. It is. Yeah. So that's that's really cool. So, um, what languages do you speak? I speak Spanish, English, and German also. Oh, okay. So yeah, I lived there five years, and I'm fluent. I'm rusted now. Yeah. But I had to be like I. It's a, it's a good life experience. Like I was thrown to the to the bus. Like in Spain, we say thrown to the horses. <laughs> yeah. Thrown to the wolves, maybe bus, wolves, or horses, something. <laughs> yeah, it's because of the horse carriage, right? Oh, okay. Horse, yeah. Right. This is 15 years ago, and I moved to Germany, and I, I had no idea of the language. I couldn't even order a, a hamburger in McDonald's in German. And I had to go and learn because I worked for a German company as a, you know, these first early jobs. And they were all like, I was in my late 20s, and these people were in their late 50s, and they were like, oh, we only speak German. <laughs> yeah. You must learn German, and I, mm -hmm. I had to. I had to learn, and I lived there five years. I got no problem at all, and I, I was, I'm fluent, but I'm rusted. I still need a, to think or to have a beer. Yeah, there's there's a lot of interesting cultures there, and I, I would like to learn about the different dialects in Germany too. But yeah, I really yeah, don't know yeah, anything yeah. about that. I, I lived in German. Bavaria a lot. Yeah, I lived in Bavaria for two and a half years in Munich. And Bavarian is 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 a difficult, tough accent, very strong accent, yeah. and they have a very regular, a very um, they have a Bavarian as a as a dialect as well, right? Which That's one? Bavarian, Bavarian, okay, Bavarian, yeah, yeah, Bavarian, yeah. Boarish, it's called in in, in, in Boarish, Boarish. Okay, <laughs> oh. yeah, it's it's so so much to learn. I'm gonna I'm gonna get more into that because I took German for two semesters, but my. <laughs> My Deutsch is not so good. <laughs> so, yeah. so that's really cool. So I, um, I wanted to know, like, so what are what are your plans now? You're moving uh, from the Czech Republic to uh, yeah. Portugal. And so yes. what is your plan to do there? What, what, what you you probably know that we are, like, in, in Europe, we're privileged in this system, in the sense, because you are, once you're a citizen of the European Union, you can live in any country or state of the European Union without visas, without working permits or without it. I just can say tomorrow, like, I'm going to live in France and I can yeah. go live in France. I'm going to live in Italy and I can go live in Italy, right? That's so, cool. yeah, I'm moving as a digital nomad. I'm moving. Um, uh, I wanted to be closer to home and uh, uh, I, I, I've over the period of almost 15 years of living here in the central of Europe. And I said, hey, it's time to go closer to my family, to be in a warmer country. And there's a certain big uh, community of foreigners living in, in Portugal that I would like to see how it looks like. There's yeah. also very good uh, uh, financial incentives for digital nomads who go there now. So um, let's try it. 
I think it's going to be okay. <laughs> that will be that will be great. Yes. Yeah. And you say the weather is better there? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I was walking around uh, in a <laughs> last week. I was in Lisbon and I was walking around in a in a sweater, and here I can exit the building <laughs> <laughs> because oh of how. Gosh. Yeah, it's hard for me to understand because, like, living in uh, Florida, it's always sunny. Like, um, yeah, it's sunny in the morning, and then it gets dark. Um, you know, in the yeah. summer, it gets dark around nine o'clock. So yeah, I've yeah. been there. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, I live there. I live there as well in Miami. I know what. I know that. I know that. Yeah. I know that. I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very so, humid. Very, yeah, yeah. How are you going to? How are, how are you going to grow the you, in your position and the translation industry in the next? Let's say. Three to five years. What what do you think? What is your plan for bureau works, and what are your plans for yourself? I like to live the moment, and I <laughs> I like to like uh, one of the things that being a, a millennial thrown by, by, uh, under the bus <laughs> yeah. by the world, not by anyone in particular, was to try and live the moment. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to live the moment. I'm trying to like you know when I when I when I when I get a job. I am um, like I come in advance and I say, "Hey, I am the way I am. I want to continue being the way I am. I want, and if you allow me to be like this and see me evolving mm -hmm. as a person and as a professional, there's a lot of things that we cannot even talk about right now that are going to happen. Mostly positive, I say. Mm -hmm. So let's develop it, right? And there's people that understand that. There's people that that, that understand that less, right? Mm -hmm. So I see myself, if I can say, like enjoying the moment." Uh, going on this and I have a very good feeling about the project we're I'm in right now and the company we're in right now we're uh, a group of friends we're still a family we're still a good family and uh, I know them like our CEO Gabriel hesitated like an hour to come and when I announced that I was leaving my previous job he didn't even hesitate for an hour to come and let and, and invite me to come back this is a very good scene uh, I but, but as I said, I want to leave the moment, enjoy, continue growing as a person, as a professional, and see how this all evolves. Like, I think, uh, I don't know how old you are, 41? Uh, 44. 44. So we're about yeah. this generation. Yeah. Uh, uh, you need to leave the moment. You yeah. The moment. And, 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 and one thing that the world has taught us is, like, the, the way our parents were seeing the world is not the way we are yeah. seeing the world. Today. Yeah. Like, so it's, planning it's, a lot in advance, it's complicated. Yeah, there's a lot of changes. I like to always, you know, I always like to adapt and adjust and evolve with the world. So, and it's also good to enjoy life, as you said. Yes, so, indeed. So speaking of enjoying life, is there any uh, big, important football games you want to go to this year coming up? I I have passion for two big things. and I mean, <laughs> sports, sports, definitely. Football watching. Uh, and and rock and roll blues yeah. like i am a big blues rock and roll fan like my whole house is a rock and roll museum itself oh, okay uh, oh, I mean, there's that's a cute. lot okay. there's a lot of 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 this guys roses queen but the whole house is decorated with the uh, rock and roll motifs and uh okay and stuff so what i do a lot i spend a lot of of personal time uh Travel, watching football, seeing football games, and also traveling around Europe to see concerts. Europe and the and the and the and the and the US. Megadeth is going on tour again. Oh, you know Megadeth? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah of course, of course. Dave Mustaine. Yeah, yeah. I like. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're they're running into tour. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big. My, I would say, my number one thing, the one the thing that always shows up and comes up by number one artist every year is Stevie Ray Vaughan. That's definitely yeah. my number one. Oh, I, I can only okay. <laughs> Texas Bluesman and then yeah. Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin, and, okay. Uh, those yeah. are my two biggest things ever. Yeah. So I, I try to, to organize business trips and, and see, hey, what's, who's going to be here? Oh my God, let's see this. Yeah. Right. yeah, I do the same thing. Like I love I love concerts. New, like I like new singers. I like old singers. I like everything. Oh, and nice. I try to like, I love working too. So I kind of like try to find a concert in a in a place where there's also like a conference I need to go to. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. I like to do that. Yeah, kind of stuff. That's so funny. You say that like the last, let's, excuse me, the last edition of Log World in Europe took place in Malmo. Log World is the, yeah. for those who don't know, is the conference 
the main number one conference in yeah. our industry, the location Lock industry. World. Right? Yeah. Lock yeah. World. Lock. And the day of the opening, John Fogerty of Creed and Skill Water Revival, at yeah. 79, 80 years old, he was playing there. I went and I got first row. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. 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 These see, rock and roll is amazing, you know. And there's yeah. what do you think there's any modern person that is that you think fills their boots or that is as good as these older ones? Great of Van Fleet. That sounds like Led Zeppelin, maybe. Yeah. Great of Van Fleet. Yeah, but I don't know. Like I gave up on new music in '96, my friend. Oh <laughs> wow! Okay, okay. You stick with all. That's good. That's good. Uh, I've seen uh, like uh, one of my mates, and uh, like I have a very good friend of mine, very good friend of mine who is uh, an English uh, late '50s guy. Let's say he has the the world record for collecting memoralia of the Rolling Stones. He's He's got a Guinness record of collecting. He owns 300,000 items of Rolling Stones memoralia, like concert tickets from a 65 gig, like uh, shoes that Jagger wore in something, whatever. Yeah. He's a friend, personal friend of Ron Wood, actually. And he okay. invited me to see his museum. So do you consider Elvis within the realm of stuff that you like? Like, like yes, indeed. I told him, what is it? Sorry, it's falling, it's falling. <laughs> No worries. Oh, Elvis. Okay. Yeah. I collect also all of these. <laughs> I'm a. I love Elvis. Yeah. I, I was I listening to Tom Jones and Engelbert Humperdinck too. Yeah. Uh, all yeah. that together. Stuff, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. I collect <laughs> all, these, all these things. I keep. I like to keep in form, and I wanna. You know, I would like to. Yeah. To at least make sure that this music is being eternal, right? I'm. Yeah. I like yeah. this stuff. Yeah, so that's wonderful. It's wonderful to talk to you about music, about translation, football, travel. You know, it's good. And it shows people like people like us, like we're, we're passionate about languages. We're passionate about life, you know, and uh, it's it's just a really good industry to be in. And I really think, yeah. you know, from what I've seen about Bureau Works, it's a really good TMS. And, you know, you seem like you would be you, an amazing salesman, you know, you're oh, no, I'm, not a salesman. I'm a connector of people. Like I tell you, I'm not the kind of salesperson that will go and be behind somebody. Hey, reply the freaking email. No, I don't like that, man. Like, yeah. Well, like, I would buy a missile with nuclear missile with sausages from you any day, man. <laughs> yeah. You got, you got it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was yeah. the funniest job interview you could ever think of, man. And, <laughs> you see, it's like, it's like is the singer not the song? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's it's yeah, super fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and thanks. I got to where I am now. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's super fun. Like one of the things that I that I'm most happy about is that thanks to this industry, I've made some of the best friends yeah. I ever I could ever I couldn't even think of, and luckily some of those friends are some of the best or the most known leaders of our industry. Yeah like people that are leading big budgets in American companies in everywhere. I'm so happy and so thankful to this industry for that, for having introduced yeah. me to those people, founders of communities here in the industry as well, uh, uh, members of boards that help people get integrated. And that's, that's, that's unique, man. That's our industry. Yeah. We're, we're our industry is in every little part of the world. <laughs> yes, indeed. Every little industry yeah. we're involved in. Yes, indeed. Mental office, uh, video gaming, Content, yes. everything. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And mostly, I like it. Maybe in the US, you don't see it so much, but like here, I mean, we like one thing that I see and that I always comment as a positive thing is like how we immigrants from everywhere around the world, people that just some Spanish guy that lives in Czech Republic that works in this thing, some French guy who lives in California who works for this. This kind of, of of such international group community that we are building in this industry, that's awesome. Like, uh, maybe it's maybe not that seen in the U.S., but that's very very common. Like, uh, yeah, like people from everywhere working in some other country for some mm -hmm. other people company, right? And yeah. that's 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 something that we should be thankful for. And uh, and like really embrace a unique opportunity because when you th we're so I think we're so used to being in my case used to be in an international environment and then you don't realize that some most of most folks are 
working in their city with in the city with their parents business and then they leave their country once a year for a yeah. trip yes and, hey not nothing to criticize if they're happy with this right but yeah i want to stress the the fact that we have really good possibilities in this industry that are not easy to yeah that is good. Good for, yeah for international workers it's really good i mean it's yeah. not always like that in my country but in my in my in my company in the company i have you know, we we together. I mean, we have people from probably at least forty different countries. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> well, <laughs> nice. Yeah, I really love it. I love it, and that's not including the translators. If you include the translators, it's everybody. <laughs> it's everybody. Yeah. yeah, every country. Yeah, because yeah. we need every language. So it, it's yeah. really it's amazing. Yes. You can speak to someone from Iran or Azerbaijan or Burma or Russia or Czech Republic. Or yeah. Senegal, yeah. anywhere, you know. It's, it's yes. Really cool. yes, 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 yeah, yes. So we have that passion for languages, and we'll keep it going. It's great to be part of this industry, and I look forward to also being on your podcast as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We're interviewing periodically uh, friends from the industry, yeah. friends who want to come and tell, uh, like, like we're building a leadership forum. We call Merging Minds. We mm -hmm. broadcast shows constantly. Actually, as we're recording, my friend is broadcasting. Uh, my colleague friend is broadcasting her own show now, and um, and uh, happy to have you there. We come and speak. We I like to share with those who follow uh, interesting life stories, uh, things that happen to people, leadership styles, leadership um, uh, advice, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm more than happy to do that. I've learned a lot about leadership in my 17 years here, <laughs> and. Uh, I'm, I'm look forward to speaking to you again and uh and uh yeah so that's our most recent episode of the language journal and thanks for being part of it thank, thank you. you very much javier and thank you alejandra see you guys and, on the next episode yeah <laughs> oh yeah thumbs up make balloon does it make balloons no <laughs> no okay well, thank not you. now not for now <laughs> all right thumbs up it does it on some things it does, oh there it is <laughs> okay <laughs> Okay. Oh, Once you're on you, iPhone, right? You're gonna be a millennial or Gen Z to learn these things, guys. Sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because he's on the <laughs> iPhone, probably. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, Thank you, guys. Right, nice. See you on the next. Nice episode. talking to you. Bye. Bye. Bye.